Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Russian forces storm Mariupol steel plant where 200 civilians remain. As other attacks devastate towns in eastern Ukraine, Russian forces have started to storm the last pocket of resistance in Mariupol, the Ats of Steel Steelworks, some Ukrainian defenders of the plant say. The move comes almost two weeks after Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered his military not to storm the plant, but rather block it off. Deputy commander of the Atsev Regiment, Sviatoslav Palomar, confirmed the situation when he was asked about local media reports on the attack. Earlier on Tuesday, Mariupol Patrol Police Chief Mikhailo Vershinin was quoted by Ukrainian television as saying that the Russian military have started to storm the plant in several places. Denis Schliger, a commander of a brigade of Ukraine's National Guard at Atsevstal, said the enemy is trying to storm the Atsevstal plant with significant forces using armored vehicles. Even before word came that Russian forces were storming the plant, the military said it was bombarding it after Vadim Astafiev, a Russian defense ministry spokesman, said that Ukrainian fighters used the ceasefire that allowed civilians to flee to take up new positions. They came out of the basements took up firing positions on the territory and in the buildings of the plant, he said. Russian troops along with the Moscow-backed separatist forces used artillery and aircraft to destroy these firing positions. More than 200 civilians remain in the Atsevstal steel plant, according to Mariupol Mayor Vadim Boychenko, with a total of 100,000 civilians still in the city that has been devastated by weeks of Russian siege and shelling. The reports come amid a UN effort that evacuated at least 101 people from the plant to Zaprize Hsai on Monday. Snot Lubriani, the humanitarian coordinator for the UN in Ukraine, said that those evacuated could finally leave the bunkers below the Atsevstal steelworks and see the daylight after two months. Another 58 people joined the convoy in Manhush, a town on the outskirts of Mariupol. After failing to take Kiev in the early weeks of the war, Russia withdrew some of its forces and then said it would switch its focus to Ukraine's eastern industrial heartland of the Donbas. Mariupol lies in the region, and its capture would deprive Ukraine of a vital port, allow Russia to establish a land corridor to the Crimean Peninsula, which it seized from Ukraine in 2014, and free up troops for fighting elsewhere in the Donbas. We had said goodbye to life dozens of evacuees who took refuge for weeks in the bunkers of the steel works reached the safety of Kiv-controlled Zaporizh Hsai on Tuesday. Exhausted-looking people, including young children and pensioners laden with bags, clambered off buses that pulled into a car park in southeastern Ukraine after escaping the ruins of their hometown where Russia now claims control. We had said goodbye to life, we didn't think anyone knew we were there said 70-year-old Valentina Sitnikova, who sheltered in the steelworks for two months with her son and 10-year-old granddaughter. The sprawling complex and its bunkers and tunnels became a refuge for both civilians and Ukrainian fighters as Moscow laid siege to Mariupol. Ms. Sitnikova said that 17 other families, including children, had sheltered with her and that their bunker had collapsed around them as Russia bombarded the area. Ukrainian soldiers pulled them out of the rubble three days ago. My granddaughter said I am scared, I am scared, and I told her it is okay, we will fly out of here somehow, she said, as she wept. I can't believe I made it, we just want rest, said Alina Kozitskaya, who spent weeks sheltering in a basement with her bags packed waiting for a chance to escape. A few women held up handmade signs calling on Ukrainian authorities to evacuate the soldiers, their relatives and loved ones, who are still trapped in Atsevstal and encircled by Russian forces. We re-scared that after the evacuation of civilians, the guys will be left there, said Ksenia Chebyshiva, 29, whose husband is among the Atsev regiment's servicemen there. Ms. Chebyshiva, who held up a sign saying save the military from Atsevstal, said she had heard her husband was still alive on April 26 but had not had any news since. They don't have food, water or ammunition, shouted another woman. They re-forgotten by everyone. Shelling too intense to recover bodies the northeastern city of Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, was under bombardment, 
as it has been since the early days of the invasion, the Ukrainian military said on Tuesday. Giving an early update on battlefront, Ukraine's general staff said its forces were defending the approach to Kharkiv from Izium, a town on the Donetsk River, some 120 kilometers to the southeast, as Russian forces left a trail of destruction in Luhansk province. Ukraine's military said Russian forces were trying to take the front line, 